Blue Man Orange. Blue Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We're we're getting Zelda fied here with the new Hyrule Warriors 2. Because if you thought Hyrule Warriors 1 wasn't enough, and you thought when they made extra, you know, double packs and so on, they came back at you bad and loud in that Dynasty Warriors style. You know, a hundred years in the past, you know, from the good old Breath of the Wild. That's what we get here in Hyrule Warriors 2. <laughs> Got is that uh, um, Macho Man? Is that R- Macho Man Randy Savage? Right. Like Breath of the Wild, yeah! <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, brother, we're getting into the higher rule warriors today on WrestleMania. Oh yeah, <laughs> Bone Saw is ready. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I don't know why. You, since you said that, this reminds me. For some reason, like on my YouTube feed, all of a sudden, I got the clips, like the clips from like the Baywatch episode, <laughs> the the. Um, Hulk Hogan and uh, Macho Man had to fight Ric Flair, and I can't remember. There's, there's a couple of the guys in it, but I was just like, shit, I gotta, gotta watch this. This is, this is gonna be interesting. It's just so funny because it's like, these people, it's like they're in like the Baywatch area, and they're like, oh man, it's like they're like Ric Flair's coming out, he's just like, you know, throwing the smackdown on like Hulkster and whatnot. Macho Man's in there, like, you know, chiming. What's in. the coincidence? We all went to the beach on the same day. <laughs> and I just love because it's like the audience is like, oh god, they're, they're just they're gonna throw down a holster. What are you gonna do? Well, let me tell you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hasselhoff, spot me. <laughs> yeah, that's actually like what it was like. And then you know they had to do a big old challenge on the beach wrestling match. <laughs> Pamela Anderson comes out holding up like the round one card, I'm guessing, or some shit like that. I'm just taking a shot in the dark. Well, well she was on Hulkster's and um, Macho Man's side, you know, not, not Ric Flair. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> like, it was like, I was like, oh, cool. Like, not, not what I expected to find, but I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to watch that clip. <laughs> Probably the best episode of Baywatch there ever was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing your YouTube. I'm guessing your phone heard you enough times do a uh, Macho Man Randy Savage voice, and its algorithms. Is, we know what you'd like. Yeah, well, I'm probably tied in. I'm not saying I don't see a Macho Man video here and there every once in a while because you need some inspiration in life. You just gotta watch the Macho Man, and life becomes a little bit better. <laughs> but but um, especially going over my, to like, I know it's like uh, so Warriors Age of Calamity. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to that, um, I'm not gonna. I actually already recorded uh, recorded an episode for this on Old Man. Old, I know, Old Man. This is Old Man Orange on Octo Rock Talk, but it was also one of those things I didn't actually have a chance to. I still have not had a chance to finish the game yet. I have like watched all the cutscenes, and I have over like ten hours or eleven hours of gameplay, so I know how the whole thing works. But yeah, I still have not beaten the game because, like I said in that other show, I'm a piece of shit. But Regardless, here we are. Well, th- this one's pretty fucking long because, you know, did you ever play the original Hyrule Warriors? I did. I did play it. I have been playing this one more. There's there's a sale on the original Hyrule Warriors, and I played it for a little while, and I liked it. I'm like, it's a Warriors game, just what I thought it would be, and I liked it, and I have every intention to go back and finish it, but that one feels a little bit more of kind of like we're just looking for an excuse to have Zelda characters in, in a Dynasty Warriors game. Where this one feels like they really wanted to tell um, a Age of Calamity story, but with the Dynasty Warriors format. Yeah, I mean, like, well, granted, like, the first one, like, what I kind of like about that game is that game really does feel like if you want that Zelda experience, but you're not really looking to throw down, like, 50 hours into a game or so, give or take, that almost feels like, it's like the, the Zelda greatest hits. Like, it gives you all the feelings of Zelda. You get to play as all the characters, because, you know, it does the thing where it's like, okay, we're going to bring, you know, everybody through time, you know, and have Skyward Zelda, and have 64 Link, and have, you know, um, even, like, uh, shit, the Wind Waker See? one, and so on, and... Yeah, so you have all these ones here. It's like, we're bringing them all together. It's like, all the best of Zelda, everything you fucking love. Come together, we're going to fight it out, and we're going to have these time mages and whatnot, and you're going to figure out who's fucking boss. And um, I just remember, like, when that game came out, what made it really big, like, it was a big deal. It was like, man, this is, like, the best fucking looking graphics I've ever seen for, like, you know, Link, Zelda, and the crew. It was just like, holy shit. <laughs> you know, when it came out on Wii U back in the day? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got that one on Switch on a sale and played it and really liked it. Um, I can say I like uh, Age of Calamity more, but at the same time, to me, 
a lot of uh, a lot of Warriors games just kind of feel kind of like oh it's just kind of like an arcade game basically sort of I mean there is like a loose story going mm-hmm. through it and you know I mainly play a game for gameplay than a story but if the story is good that is is better that's a bonus um, this one feels like I, I don't like it as much as other Zelda games because it's not you know it's not a main Zelda game really but. Mm-hmm. As far as the way it plays, though, and I, I feel like they kind of add a little bit more tactics than, say, Hyrule Warriors did. Or the, the original Hyrule Warrior, Warriors. Well, it's like, this one's definitely much, much more streamlined than the original one kind of was. And, um, I mean, I, I kind of like that. Like, you know, they get rid of sort of, like, the magic that they used to have. We used to always be running around, like, shit, where's the fucking like, bottle of magic? I need, I need some more. Fill that up. Or when you had to go search for hearts, you just had to go look for the container mm-hmm. somewhere. Like, they kind of stream that out of the way and so on. And even just, like kind of the upgrade systems. I like it. It's a lot more simpler. I remember in the other one, there was just like all sorts of crap you always had to kind of get. And there was just different areas, you know, you're doing your normal like tree of like stats and so on, but then you had your weapons and so on. They had all the kind of, you know, how do you want to like form this and forge this and all that. But by the way, there's also these like emblems and things you need to wear too. You're like, well, why is there so much of this stuff here? Like just, just, Give me a goddamn sword, and, like, sometimes... Maybe a 14-year-old kid on Adderall to keep up with all this shit. Well, because it's, like, one of those ones, like, I really hate, like, the, a lot of times, like, the forging and kind of, um... What the fuck's that word? When you, when, crafting? Yeah, and... I, I, I... Generally, when I see crafting in video games, it's that's mostly, like, a huge turnoff. Because I just... Because well, there's some of those games that, like... Unless you have a strategy guide or something like that, there's some of those items that, like, oh, well, this one enemy drops it, like, way over here, but you probably have to kill, like, a hundred of them to get it. Like, well, how am I ever going to figure that out on my own? Like, mm-hmm. I-, I hate that kind of stuff. If, it- if it's, like, light crafting, where it's like, well, I'm no matter what, I'm just going to be picking up these items as I go along anyways, just naturally, that, do- that doesn't really bother me. Like, in a sense, in Age of Calamity and Hyrule Warriors 2... That one's kind of better for it because, yeah, you just kind of go along and everything you kind of need pretty much is there, you know? And they even have, like, the little sensor that can send you if you need to look for a certain item. You can go to the store or you can go over to, like, the certain level and play it over again and get what you need. So it, it's not so, like, overbearing. Yeah, and um, this one, actually, they kind of went more out of the way with the story because it does throw you the curveball for a while. Like, okay, so this is going to function as a prequel to to Breath of the Wild, and then we're gonna work our way into how, everyone's gonna slowly die off by the end. And then you have to you know at the last minute try and you know get to the healing chamber or something like that. Was my guess like oh no we're doing tri- time travel shit here. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean I I guess it's kind of because like you know the first one did have a big story in it as well too. I mean I mean as far as a hack and slash game sort of goes. I, I guess there. I know there's a mo- story. And I guess I never finished that one, but this and I, I plan on it, but never finished it. But I guess that it would. It, did, it felt kind of like that. How do you put it? Like there's that. You would have maybe a little in-game cutscene very quickly, but the majority of it would be like a lot of exposition, and that's where Link and Zelda went to the Great Dooku Tree, where they met a 17-year-old girl who looked like she got back from a cosplay con- a cosplay show or something, <laughs> you know? And that's where it, it would do that a lot of that still frame and just narration, and there was a little bit of kind of like just the narration with this, mm-hmm. but there were still a lot of cutscenes that came back around and told a full story, I felt like. Yeah, well, there was quite a bit of cutscenes in the other one, because I remember that being a big deal of that game. I was like, oh, shit, there's like full-on cutscenes and so on, and Hyrule Warriors. I'm like, you don't ever see this in Zelda very often. With them talking and all that? Yeah, with them talking and so on. I mean, of course, the first thing I have to do is make sure you put it in Japanese. Like, God forbid, yeah. God forbid a Japanese game is going to speak in English to me. <laughs> Depends on the game for me. Um, I guess I just remember that one being more, um, you know, I guess I just remember that one, like, I, I remember there being like, a few cutscenes here and there, but just not a big heavy story. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Yeah, there, there was quite a bit of story in that one, because I played through the whole thing, and a couple, couple times, because I also have it on 3DS and so on, but, um... Like, I mean, it's probably just as much story as this game. I wouldn't say it's any different. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. I just going off, and I just remember it being a lot more just focused on the battles and everything else kind of came secondary. But, um... But, I just, but um, the, the whole thing with, uh, where they did the whole time travel thing, I know that pissed some people off, because, like, it's suddenly, it's, it's, they said this is canon! Like, well, I guess kind of still is canon. It's just kind of like just, backdoor canon, kind of parallel universe kind of canon shit, because that's what Zelda always has, all these, like, branch-off periods in its timeline. 
Yeah, I mean, that to me, I don't know. Some people just get weird about that kind of stuff. I mean, let, let's be honest. You're playing a, a Warriors game. You're there just to kind of kick some ass and murder as many people as possible because that's pretty much what those games are. It's like just the super, like if you thought you had a, like a murder simulator before, it's like, no, 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 Warriors games. It's like at the very end, just like you killed like 90,000 people. Like, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> those Moblins are not going back to their family. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, when I play as Link, I mean, other characters, they, they talk and they say things, so it's you can kind of, like, work their whole personality around that, but Link is exactly the, the, the player avatar, so you can kind of fit whatever you want into him. So, for me, he is just, like, a hungry, bloodthirsty monster in that game. That's kind of the way I play it, really. And then, you know, you go into a place, you go into, like, one of your camps, your guys are getting slaughtered. Link just kills everybody in there, and some high rule soldier getting up. Oh, thank you! He's already running up the door, like foaming at the mouth. <laughs> it's like, so what happened? Well, you know the guy who always like sleeps in and just likes to eat. Apparently, he's a fucking, he's a savage fucking cunt. He he hates he he like I know we we're trying to kill the monsters, but I I walked in on him like skull fucking a moblin. So I don't, I don't know what that tells you. He'd already he broke up he broke a couple of Geneva Convention rules. <laughs> yeah, you, you can kind of see why Princess Zelda's into it. She likes that bad boy archetype. <laughs> but not the stupid Japanese like emo version. No, no, no. She wants the full on like Conan the Barbarian one. <laughs> so the plan was we all went in there together. Link ran straight ahead. We already saw kind of like the enemy base kind of crumble and fall apart and fire. There's four more of those we got to get to. By the time we got to the last one, we just saw him there with his pants down, everything on fire. He's jerking off, singing. Not actually singing, more screaming the lyrics to Foo Fighters Nevermore. So... <laughs> <laughs> I really do love, like, when you first kind of get the game, like, and it's so weird, it's like, Link's the only one for, like, the entire game until, like, the very end that has, like, costume changes, but nobody else seems to have, but I was like, I love how you could just have Link and his fucking, like, boxers running around murdering people. I don't know why, like, that. I had him like that for a while, and, my, and then he, like, when he's in the cutscenes, he's just fucking stand there, and he just looks like the skinniest version of Conan the Barbarian, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, that guy's a fucking warrior. <laughs> And, like, he barely ever shows any emotion. Like, you are a great friend, Link. You know, just stand there. <sighs> Here, eat this rock. Yeah, it's good for you. He just, like, starts chewing on Like, oh, oh, God, look at him go. <laughs> only a Goron He's even bleeding that. from the mouth. He's only bleeding from the mouth. Like, his eyes, like, are looking in different directions. Like, he just goes like a... It's like how some dogs get really, like, aggressive and rabid when you feed them. Like... Don't touch the dog when he eats. He might snap at you. It's kind of the same thing with Link. <laughs> yeah, just like, Eyes just looking at different Ray's directions, no just chomping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just go to fucking Animals town, bite when like, you try to take their food. What makes people any less different? <laughs> now, now, what was the main character you probably played as most? I mean, I tried everybody. And everybody, it's like, you know, the nice about High Rules games is nobody plays like, there's no real bad character. Every character plays pretty good. You just kind of gravitate more towards other ones, I think. Of the ones I've been able to unlock, so I know later, I, I didn't get to the part, I, I know what happens, so I watched the cutscenes to prepare for the shows. But um, I know that eventually the characters from the Breath of the Wild timeline come in and help. So I didn't get that far, but I have, uh, of the characters I do have, the ones I play as a lot is Link, obviously, you have to play him a lot, but he's already one of the best characters. Mm -hmm. Um, Yorobosa definitely is one of the best characters. Mm -hmm. I like, uh, Mifa. She's good. Yeah, I, I like her a lot. That was, that was one of the main ones I would use quite often. Daruk. Daruk's good. He's a little slow, but he's a powerhouse. I like him. And every and I for a while wasn't playing as her, but then once I realized how to use her, Impa is really good. Yeah, um, I, I I didn't I didn't think I was gonna use her a whole lot, but then once I started try, trying her out more, I'm like oh no, she is really good. Uh, Zelda, it's not that Zelda's bad. It's just that by the time I kind of turned back to Zelda to play as her, all my other characters are a little further ahead. So I'm kind of like eh, you know. And plus, her she has like the same. Her, her her attacks make this one particular noise, which is kind of irritating after a while. You know what I mean? So that, that that's not enough to kill the character for me, but never really played her, her a lot. And then, even though he plays okay, 
and I like his design, I don't play as Rivali just because he's such a fucking pompous prick. Oh. I fucking hate Rivali. The game, the first game he comes in, he's, like, he's kind of an asshole, but whatever, I can look past it. But this game, it's like, no, fuck this guy. <laughs> Everybody survives in this one. I wish he still fucking died. Spoilers. It, well, he, he's literally like, he must be in the same like clan as Falco. Like, there's probably, you know what I mean? Falco, <laughs> no, he, here's the difference. I feel like Falco, because he's meant to be somewhat of like a homage to Falco. But the thing about Falco, Falco comes across as me as a guy who was like raised in the Bronx and was probably doing illegal street racing and all that. And his father's is like, you know, sent him to military school. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's the way I take Falco. This seems like some kind of like entitled, privileged prick. At least his, his the way how he acts. And the thing is, you could prove that you were, you, you could prove to Falco that you, you were worth his time. But the thing about this asshole is, you're the one fucking... You could be the one doing everything. And he's like, you're just gonna get in the way. It's like, oh, fuck you, dude. I, like... When I was just going to your fucking doorstep, I, like, murdered all your fucking family. <laughs> your whole fucking family. And I felt nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he, he really is, like, a... He's, like, an even more kind of, like, shittier kind of, like, early Vegeta. Like, he just has that, like, oh, I'm supposed to be the... Why am I not the chosen one? Why is Kakarot the boy here? <laughs> well, the, even Vegeta, he, Vegeta started off as a bad guy, so that's okay. It's not like, if it opened up with Vegeta being kind of like, I'm the good guy, you have to like me, <laughs> then it would be more I, like I, a... I really just want to see this. Vegeta just thrown into, like, Dragon Ball, the original series, and so I'm being like, Kakarot, but I want to be the one for training with Master Roshi. <laughs> He's there instead of Krillin. You know? <laughs> no, Krillin's still there too, but you know. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> no, but the whole thing with it, it, it's just like, Vegeta, you warm up to him. So he starts off as a villain, so you're like, okay, I can get behind a villain, whatever, in, in that role. But then he slowly becomes a good guy, so you ease into it. Rivali is just a pompous asshole to Link the whole time. And the most he says is like, we got fine, we all did great. You got in the way, but I guess it's okay that you're here. It kind of helped. It's like... I will slit your fucking throat right now if this game gave me the option, dude. Hey, well, Lee has a thing. It's just like, oh, the princess's little boy toy's brought around. Well, the he's princess's only, little boy he, toy is the only one here fucking cause, killing cause he's, everything. Because he's fucking the princess. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but he's also killing everything, so <laughs> shit. You know, as shitty as that guy's personality was, I will say, as playing as him, though, because he had that flying move, it was almost a little bit overkill because you could fly and then, like, you could just shoot the bow and arrow and it'd shoot out, like, eight like shots like one two three four five and just like you just like murder like a pack of anybody in your way fly the next one murder a pack like he was oh I, I did have him in my party mode with them because he would be like the one if like okay let's just fly somewhere and build up some like kills he was perfect for that i guess he's not bad for that but i mean i know that he i just don't like his character <laughs> yeah, so. yeah i mean i, I agree the, the character is douchey and so on i mean my favorite character they're probably in there sounds weird but it was actually zelda because like as she kind of went at first you know she kind of because she has those weird moves that she almost has like you know she's got the sheikah tablet and she's got like q 007 like gadgets that come out of it pretty much. like that's really how she yeah. fights like you know she throws stones out and then she blows them up or she's got the automated bomb you know and so on but as time kind of went on i got kind of used to it. i was like oh my god like zelda is just like she's like the super sorceress that can just like annihilate everything and then she has one move that like you can get where like she jumps inside like a mine cart and just shoots down the area running everybody over it's fucking like it's like holy crap <laughs> just like -na 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 -na, just plowing through everybody and then i also even like like because of that bomb that you could throw out like the bomb would sit there and you know you can't get hurt when that's going on so you're just like doo -doo 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 -doo, let the bomb go okay he's done doing his attack now i'll go back again that makes sense no I, I mean i imagine all characters are good once you learn how to use them i even thought the uh the little maraca shaker tree thing that thing's like that thing's a fucking playable character yeah like, I know. oh he's actually he's actually kind of good <laughs> yeah that's a, well that's always kind of how it because you know like in any of these games they're kind of made the same way that like a fighting game is where it's like okay you got your normal kind of like i guess you would say like the cool characters your story characters and so on but there's always got to be a couple of like the like the weird goofy characters and what have you you know and the tree thing's always like that's like your your blanca or something like that <laughs> yeah he's your blanca or you're like Maybe kind of your Doslim, sort of. Not, like, aesthetically, but just, yeah. like, you know, just that oddball character, you know. Or your E-Honda, even. Yeah. Um, 
No, um, I, I think that uh, I, I know the, the characters I named off are kind of like somewhat vanilla choices because they're just kind of like the main, with the exception of Rivali, they're basically the main, um, the main um, champions right there. I will say it's kind of funny though when you do decide to uh, when they actually start letting like, you pilot the divine beast. Mm -hmm. How it's just kind of like destroy them all and all the ro and they're all just turn like what the fuck and then you see like this <laughs> giant robot elephant or whatever coming in I, I will say of all that though the funnest one to pilot is probably um your boses oh yeah that, that one camel. is a pretty sweet one it, oddly the lizard one's actually it's not the most exciting one but like that one was actually really easy just to kind of go through and just just annihilate your way through and just murder around like, sometimes when you're flying the giant big bird one and whatnot, like, at first I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to Oh, we're supposed to shoot these little, like, yurt things, but, like, you know, go kill the Genghis Khan hut things out there. Like, yeah. that, that's what I mean. Do we really need this giant, like, destructive bird for this? Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a weird X. I saw in the story that, um, the, uh, I don't remember her name, but basically the queen of the, the, the modern queen of the Gerudo comes in like the little girl version of your bosa more or less or like her descendant mm -hmm. um does she ride a fucking walrus or something yeah she's got like that sand walrus thing that you can remember like in um yeah and yeah. breath of the wild you could surf behind it and so on she, she has one of those things it's kind of like her r2 move that's actually pretty cool yeah that's actually cool. i mean like all, all those characters i didn't play a ton with those like the the, the second kind of wave of like you know the royalty characters coming in but, like, you know, you play a little bit of them kind of here and there, and it's like, oh, okay, the, 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 you know, the, the, you can see where they're all kind of neat, but there is that point where it's almost like that overwhelm. There's so many characters, you know, you can only choose. It's not like a fighting game where it's like you could almost switch back and forth. I mean, I guess you could, sort of, but, you know, once you mm -hmm. kind of get sort of locked into the couple of characters you like, you mostly kind of start going like that. One character, though, that was amazing, though, that like, I just, I didn't even think of it actually being a character and just kind of happened. It was like, you get Zelda's dad. And he was just fucking just swinging a big fat fucking sword. And then you could switch, like, kind of like he has, like, the thing like Zelda is where he turns to Sheik. But instead, he turns into the executioner. And he's got an axe and he just starts murdering people. It's like. Really? So, so he basically, he turns. Does he have, like, the hood he had? Yeah, he and, the, like, um. Yeah, and so it's like, well, those ones, like, he's the king, but you know what the king really likes to do? Chop people's like, fucking heads off. <laughs> Well, I always thought, I always liked. So, is he basically in the outfit that he's in when you when you first meet him in Breath of the Wild? Or he, you think he's just some homeless guy? Like, oh shit, that's the king. Yeah, I think so because he has the hood on and everything. It's been a while since I played Breath of the Wild at this point, but that's actually that's cool because I, I, I even on Octorok Talker said I like the the homeless version of the king or something like that. And he's just like, yeah. When James said like, well, chances are if you uh, play if you plays this game and you plays him, he's probably not going to be in that at some point. Like. Well, he's also, also a weird choice that that's what he decided, decided, decided to dress himself as. Like, what if you just going through a phase? Just going through a phase? Like, I just want to see how the other side lives. I'm going to be homeless. The country already fell apart. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he's like, people blame me for everything. I probably need a disguise. That's probably what it was. <laughs> you know, well, those ones got to leave the castle somehow. Uh, the, the thing that I was actually thinking, at least so far in the game, I mean, there's still more crap to do because this game has... Like, you know, beyond... Like, that's the only thing I will say in it is, like, um, there's almost, like, too much shit to do. And I know that's always, like, a weird one to kind of complain about when you start doing that thing where you're like, you know, like, well, the game's got too much. But, like, it reminds me the same way that kind of Breath of the Wild kind of was where, you know, in Breath of the Wild, there was too many of those little teeny, like, challenge dungeons or whatever the heck... You, I can't remember what they're called, but, like, you know, there, what was there, like, 120 or 30 or something of them? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it was just like, I felt like, you know, there probably could have been like 60. You know what I mean? Like, does there really need to be that many of them? I mean, shit, just, or do 50 of them and make them slightly bigger. I don't, I don't care. Like, I just felt like that, that was a little bit too much. And I know it's such a weird thing to kind of go like, I'm, I'm complaining because they gave me more. But I felt sort of like in this one too, it's just like, Every single time you beat, like, a story mission, it's just, like, you watch the map, and it's like, boom, 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 and you're like, oh, 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 oh. it's just like, stop, stop, stop adding more stuff to there. I just got caught up, and now there's, like, you know, 15 more items on there. I guess there's always something to do, but at the same time, I just look at it like, fuck, I gotta, I don't want to go play as this guy to just go, because I guess the thing about a Warriors game is, is it's always a, um, it's never really anything that different. It's, kill everybody in sight or protect this guy here and kill everybody in sight in the process 
Yeah. Well, I, the thing I think actually is kind of different is because between this one and, like, the first Hyrule Warriors is in the first Hyrule Warriors, there was just, like, story mode. And you literally just played only the story level. So, I like, you know, you beat the game in, like, maybe give or take 10 hours or something like that. So, in my mind, that's what I was thinking this game was going to be like. And then they technically had, like, those challenges and all that extra kind of stuff. That was a different mode in that game. So, you know, a lot of times, for most people, they probably just played the story mode and bypassed the rest, just going, oh, yeah, more, more challenge battles, oh, okay, whatever. Where in this one, they kind of included it all together, which is kind of cool, but it also gave it a very overwhelming feeling, too. I mean, I was like, holy crap, I'm, <laughs> there's so much to do here. The first time I saw that map, like, wait, what the fuck is all this? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then figuring out what's a mission and what's just, like, a thing to upgrade, you know? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Yeah, at first it looks very overwhelming, but then it's like, oh, okay, it's pretty simple. I mean, you just kind of, you just get a bunch of crap items, and then you, like, either give them to people, and you're like, hey, let's fix the town up, you know? And, oh, cool, I got an extra heart or an extra combo or, you know, just little extra abilities like that. And, I mean, I guess technically if you really want to, you probably could almost bypass like, all, like, the extra challenge missions and so on and just play straight through the story mode. I don't think you would really... I mean, you want to get some of those things along the way just so you get the extra combos and, you know, health and a little bit of upgrades. But for the most part, I bet you you could almost do the story mode and kind of kind of be able to get by. It might be a little bit more challenging for sure, but, you know, not, not so bad either. Uh, what do you think, as far as this game goes, because this is... Uh, this does the whole thing where they reset time more or less so breath of the wild never happens they managed to stop the war from even well they they they, they won the war rather mm -hmm. do you think they're going to do something to the effect of it being like um this branches off a new timeline from zelda and they're going to do a new game set in this positive a uh, prosperous timeline or do you think this is going to be like a uh a one and done kind of thing well it's kind of weird because it's like they keep talking about there's going to be the high or not the Hyrule really, um, Breath of the Wild two, which is kind of weird because you think about it's like Zelda practically never does sequels. So I, it, it, I mean, I think it was that thing that Nintendo's like, shit, we made so much money on, we did gangbusters on that game. Let's uh, let's ride that wave. And I think what they're doing is this one's kind of like an in between. So I'm wondering if the higher if the Breath of the Wild two is going to be sort of like the alternate timeline from here, you know. And, but then maybe I it, don't think they do that. Maybe they would, but I don't think they would. But then maybe it fuses together with Breath of the Wild, like you know, something really goofy. But like Nintendo would find a way for it to work. Well, the thing is about a lot of I guess Breath of the Wild is one of the only Zelda games, not the only, but one of the only Zelda games that is distinctly okay. It's definitely not one of these three timelines. It's its own thing because it's so far into the future. Apparently, he lost at some point. There's nothing else this can be other than Breath of the Wild. Where other Zelda games, it feels like you can maybe tack this. I mean, there's context clues, and people who really, really know Zelda super well, they might be able to narrow in on this or that, but <clears throat> I think the average person, you can just, like, tack a Zelda game at any point, and later you find out, oh, okay, this is uh, the failure timeline, or this is the timeline where Link with no Link, a timeline with Link after Ocarina of Time, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, like, there's there's those certain kind of continue ones, like, I guess, like, Majora's Mask being, like, I guess that's the biggest one that's, like, a full-on sequel. I mean, Link, Link Between Worlds, I guess you can kind of say is like one, too, because that's sort of a sequel slash remake, sort of, of um, the third one. But, um, yeah, for the most part, yeah, there's those little continual things that kind of happen, but they're almost, like, such, like, generations apart. Or even, like, timelines apart that it's not super sequel-like. Where the Breath of the Wild 2, I mean, I know that, like, there hasn't really been anything said. But it almost feels like, is that going to be a straight-up sequel? Just, like, almost kind of, I guess, the way that Majora's Mask was. Where it's just like, shit, Link's done. I right, Let's just go, well, hey, look at this crazy mask guy. Oh, shit, we're on another adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also, I'm thinking, like, something about, uh, about that is... Which was an example I was going to make. Um, well... You look at something kind of like, uh, like, you you look at the original Zelda games, or not even the original original Zelda games. You, you look at say something like Ocarina of Time mm -hmm. and every three D Zelda game that follows, and then you look at two D style Zelda games, and then you look at Breath of the Wild. Do you think from now on, all Zelda games are going to be kind of like Breath of the Wild style, and then if we in if we only time we ever see kind of like a linear, a more linear, I mean, I guess to some extent it's linear, but you know what I mean, it's, it's not open world. Um, 
But only time we see a, a traditional 3D Zelda game is kind of if we're getting a remaster or something. Well, I mean, like, tactically, all Zelda games are a variation of open world. I mean, I know somebody might say what's more open world. I mean, you could have a dick measuring contest be who has more open world than the other person. But, like, I mean, they pretty much all are. But I know what you mean. Like, something that, like, will be... Because this, you know, we're always seeing... I keep saying Hyrule Warriors, but... Because that's what we're talking about. But um, Breath of the Wild was always kind of like... It, it reminded me of, like, New Super Mario Brothers, where it's like, hey, let's go back to the very first Zelda game and kind of, like, skip out almost, like, some of the in-between stuff and almost kind of be like, boom, hey, let's make a game kind of, like, almost if it was a direct sequel. Not like it's a sequel story-wise, but, like, that's that exact same kind of style, but just with brand-new graphics and so on like that. Um, I think as time will go on, because that was always my kind of even, like, my slight thing about Breath of the Wild is I felt like... It's cool that you can just kind of run in any direction you want and so on, but it almost made the story, like, much smaller because of that. Like, there's a, there's a trade-off, I think. The more kind of, like, open-world kind of run-around you make, it makes the game longer for sure, and it makes there, like, maybe more just, like, dick-around stuff to do, but I feel like it makes the story and kind of, like, that part of the adventure much less. It was, like, that was, like, the trade-off for it, you know, because even, like, the thing too because since they did the thing they're like well fuck it people keep bitching about fire temples and forest temples and so on we're only gonna have one temple in this entire game it's just gonna be robot magic that's all there is here we got robot <laughs> magic you, yeah yeah there's there's a snow area and you know all that kind of stuff but when you go into a temple place it's only gonna be robot magic <laughs> that does sum it up pretty well yeah but i just mean yeah because you, you i'm saying because there blatantly is a that that's almost kind of what i mean like there is this thing, like, okay, we're in the ice area now, we're in, not just like, not just like in uh, Breath of the Wild, like, we're in the icy zone, but I mean, more in the, we're in the ice temple, and there's a lot more story in that area, as, as you progress through the game, because you're right, I feel like there was more story in the original Zelda games leading up to Breath of the Wild, then once you get to Breath of the Wild, you can kind of go do whatever you want, mm -hmm. and you can kind of go wherever you want, you can bump into a boss you're not prepared for, where the other ones, that would not happen. You would have everything, and you'd have to almost go down a checklist to a certain extent. There's some dungeons you could do before others, but most of the time it was like you're going down to this checklist somewhat. I'm wondering if, moving forward, if they're still going to do that, though. If they're going to be, if we're, if it's just going to be Breath of the Wild, or if that's just going to be like, oh, this is one of the other three types of Zelda games we make. We make uh, 2D top-down views. We make the, uh, we make the 3D Ocarina of, Ocarina of Time styles and the Breath of the Wild styles. Yeah, probably what if I had a guess is they'll come to about a center mark where they kind of get the the best of both worlds. Where it's like okay, here, here we're gonna get more story because you know you think about with Breath of the Wild, you really only have four major temples and then you know Ganons. That that's all there is. So it makes it feel like it's like the beginning part of all like the old Zeldas. Granted, there's all the other stuff you can kind of do, but like. If you literally just was one of those people that just bypassed, you're like, I fucking hate side quests, and just went straight through all the temples, you know, you could beat that game pretty darn quick, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I think what they might do is have the thing where it'd be like, okay, well, let's make it kind of more like, uh, I guess you would say, I know this kind of in the sense of traditional Zelda is the original, but like a traditional Zelda is in like games that we had for the last 20 years, where it'd be like, okay, there's going to be like nine different temples, and we're going to have different lands, and it's not just going to be robot magic, and there's going to be a lot more variety and so on kind of going on. But you can also go to whatever one you want to first. I, that's how I feel like it will be, is they'll just kind of keep it in that sort of style where you're not landlocked to any one place. Because the other Zelda that kind of did it that nobody ever brings up is A Link Between Worlds. Um, that one had the thing that, like, there was that uh, whatever rabbit mag magician dude that just, like, moves into your house. is like, yo, I'm setting up fucking shop. You'll be like, well, I live here. Not anymore. <laughs> go out there and start adventuring. <laughs> But the cool thing about that is he literally just said, he's like, yo, I got all the items. You just got the items from him. And I can't remember if you had to buy them or anything like that. But you literally could just get whatever item you wanted and go like, cool, now I got the wand. Or now I got the hammer. Now I can go solve this fucking mystery over here and so on. And that game sort of kind of did that before. Just I think because it was on 3DS and people kind of bypassed it, you know. Um, that one kind of had that almost old school, you know, I guess you would say open world. Just go to whatever temple you want to first and then just kind of beat them that way but i think that's kind of almost where you would see the future of them kind of going you know where breath of the wild was kind of that exp or, um, experiment in a sense now hopefully they can just sort of add in just 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 a little bit more kind of story and depth to it and so on yeah yeah well as far as uh 
I'm wondering how if like the Hyrule Warriors is become an ongoing series for them, or if like this one's gonna be taking place in this weird different timeline, or I, cause I, I don't know, cause this one totally resets part of that timeline. So I don't think the next Breath of the Wild game is gonna take place in this new timeline they set up, but at the same time. I can see them maybe this just being almost the teeing off for other games and a lot of times don't even mention it. They never really even mention the timeline thing. It's just that thing that's there if you like looking into it. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know. I think that maybe that this one will still have some effect on whatever the second one is. Like I think there'll be those things like not like you have to play this to be able to play Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever, but I bet you there'll be some stuff from it that will kind of carry on and affect whatever, however that one kind of goes down. Well, maybe even you, at some point you see Sidon and he's all happy. Like, yeah, another timeline, I saved my sister and everything worked out. Yeah, like something like that. Like now you got the multiple timelines going on and maybe that's how it's kind of interacting together and whatnot. I mean, one of the things I know, this, this is just going back to like the gameplay wise, but something I really enjoyed about this Hyrule Warriors over kind of like the previous one though is because the, the biggest downfall, I think, in that last Hyrule Warriors is there's too much of those things that would come up every once in a while where, like, you're fighting, like, the biggest fucking boss known to mankind. There, there's just some stupid fucking guard being like, oh, I'm going to fall down over here, uh, Link. You better run across the entire map and get back here and save me because I can't do fucking anything. So then you have to book it back and hopefully hope you can make it, but you were clear on the other side, and half the time you would get about halfway there and then it'd be like, oh, you know, this area fell. Game over. Yeah, that always pissed me off in Warriors games, and I've yet to run into that in this. I mean, I know you do have to defend your, uh, you know, your different, your different uh, stations at certain points, but it never felt anything like that, like like other Warriors games where it just you totally you have somebody, you know, everyone around you is just totally fucking hapless. Like, how the fuck <laughs> do you guys? How the how the fuck do you get your fucking military license? I, and that's something that, that bothers me in almost any kind of video game is always that like, like why is like you got if you have an entire army why do I have to do all the fucking heavy lifting you know what I mean like, like it, it should be like I just focus on that and I will say that's what I like about the, this new one Hyrule Warriors two I never I never had that problem once in like the over twenty five hours I've been playing the game not nothing that never I never lost the mission because some fucking like guard couldn't like hold his fucking base. Yeah. And the worst part too well, is sometimes you'd run back there and you'd be like, dude, it's just a, it's just a bunch of regular moblins in here. Like, th th there's there's not even a giant one. There's nothing else. There's not a skeleton. There's not a fucking like, you know, cyclops in here. Like, what's the fucking problem? <laughs> oh, he's big and he's scary. Yeah, <laughs> or some shit. Yeah, yeah well, he's little what's... and he's got a spear and he's poking me in the ass cheeks and I don't like it. <laughs> I didn't put armor there. I put it everywhere else on my body. I didn't think they were gonna go for the ass. I read, I read that manga uh, Goblin Slayer, and I'm afraid they're all going to fuck me. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, like, that kind of thing. And, I mean, like, and here's the other thing that kind of makes up for that, too. Now, I know that, like, in the original Hyrule Warriors on Wii U, like, they, they didn't have that feature that's in um, this version and Hyrule Warriors 2. And it's also in, that, like, the, the Switch version and the 3DS one, but the original one didn't have it where, like, which is, like, one of the best features, I think, for any of these Warriors games where you can be like, okay, let's just say I'm playing as Link and I'm going this direction. Well, I can send Zelda, you know, I, I can send, like, you know, Impa, any of those other guys, like, to the other checkpoints. And then when I'm done kicking ass, I just switch on over to them. I kick ass, send Link to wherever he needs to go next, and back and forth. Like, in that original Wii U one, it's just like you always had to run every fucking place, just being like, well, let me get there. I know there's a time limit going, <laughs> but, you know... Just like you, you were always on the move, and that that was always kind of. I remember when I saw that feature appear in like the 3DS one. I'm like, dude, that why is that feature not in like every one of these Warriors games? I mean, shit, there's probably been about 30 Warriors games, and you now just figured out that like, hey, that's a good feature to throw in there. <laughs> yeah, it took them that long to figure that out. Because I remember that was the biggest thing about playing Hyrule Warriors for the first time. I was like, I haven't played a Warriors game since like Dynasty Warriors three. So like, there was a whole lot of improvements that I saw. <laughs> Last time I played one was like before all for Hyrule Warriors was uh, probably I don't remember which one it was it was definitely on PS2 though yeah that, that that's what it was it was PS2 and I remember that was just such a mind blowing game for the time you're like holy crap I, I can just kill how many guys over and over and so on but like I will say it's like the second that you add like Zelda characters to it it's just like oh that that just makes it a hundred times more interesting for me <laughs> you know like that right there is well, just like too cool. 
Well, they did do. Uh, they had a Berserk Warrior. They had a Berserk Dynasty Warrior style game. I don't actually know if it was officially Dynasty Warriors. It was in the same type of style. Mm-hmm. They, well, they had a. They had Gundam ones, I think. Yeah, they have Gundam. They have a Dragon Warrior. They have. Um, there, there's like all kinds of them. I and mean, I mean, like, granted, it's one of those like kind of formats. Like the best way to sort of describe it, it almost reminds me kind of like the Lego games. You know, because, like, you play a couple Lego games, you're like, man, these are fucking awesome. And then you, by the time you get to about the third or fourth Lego game, you kind of realize it's all the same thing over and over and over with just, like, a different overlay, in a sense. You know? Just depending on the, the theme of it is what kind of saves it for you. Yeah, and, I mean, that's sort of how the Warriors games is. But, I mean, like, you literally could probably take that warrior style. I mean, you could add all kinds. Of, like, even, like, playing, I was like, you know what would actually be kind of a sick Warriors game would be, um, like, a Lord of the Rings one. You know, I mean, I know that like, you know, you could, someone could say like, well, the two towers game. And so I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I know you're like that, but just like, I mean, literally warrior style. I think that would be kind of sick. Lord of the Rings one make, would make sense. Star Wars one, definitely. Yeah, like a Star Wars one would be totally badass. Because I was thinking that too. I'm like, man, just like with the Jedi and whatnot, I mean, you'd have other characters too. But, and then even like, you know, the other one that'd be really awesome would be Final Fantasy. I mean, shit, they did Dragon Quest. Why can't mm-hmm. they do Final Fantasy? Yeah, Dragon Quest. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with that. Um, even like, uh, shit, a Helsing one could work. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean that because that... the vampires aside, you also fight a lot of zombies in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, because it also has all kinds of cool like things you could destroy and kind of like that futuristic sort of like vampire like Nazi type stuff and what have you. But um, yeah, it's just like you just like that style so set up that like you could just think of all kinds of things for days. You know, granted, like, I still think it's like, you know, you play the Hyrule Warriors, and that, to me, feels like the top tier. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what a PS4 Warriors game is like nowadays. It's like, oh, it probably has even more enemies on screen and so on. Because that's always the sort of thing you wonder if, like, the Switch is like, well, how much can it really load up at once? Well, the fact we're saying that, that Warriors, they have, like, these Warrior games for Zelda, Nintendo has been getting more ballsier with uh, their IP. Because for a while, it was like... If Nintendo didn't make it, it's not fucking happening. If it is happening, we have to oversee it very, very carefully. Which I'm sure that's happening to some extent, of course. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there is this that period where it was really unlikely for that kind of thing. Like, even though I haven't played the game, but I hear it's really fun. There's the Mario and Rabbids game. Which, theme-wise, that sounds weird. Like, a strategic... A, a strategy, third-person kind of shooter cover base game with Mario and the Rabbids from Ubisoft. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a weird fu- is it Ubisoft or something else? Yeah, it, 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 it's yeah, it's Ubisoft. That's a weird fucking combination. But the game but but the guy apparently the guy who made, who liked Rabbids or made Rabbids apparently really loves Mario and pitched it to Shigeru Miyamoto. He's like, "Yeah, let's see what fucking happens." You know, which is something you really want to hear for a while. Now, you know, Dynasty Warriors Zelda games, there's two of them now. And, you know, hopefully, not 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 on every aspect, but hopefully Nintendo starts taking a page out of Sega's playbook where, like, okay, apparently we don't know how to make a Sonic game, so let's just hire people who've made Sonic fan games and Sonic ports and give them a job. And, oh, yeah, these guys make, go ahead and make Street, uh, Streets of Rage 4. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. You start kind of having other things. I mean, technically, Oracle of Ages and Seasons is made by Capcom. That's, like, I guess the first one that's different. I guess so. I guess that one is made by Capcom, but at the same time, it's also, like... I feel like, even though I never played that one, you had the red one and you had the blue one. What was that around? Wait, what do you mean, red one and blue one? You mean, like, just because, like, the the different cards? Yeah, the Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, it was kind of like they're trying to, like, well... We could basically kind of make a very similar game or companion game and release them both at the same time or very close together or something like that. So. Yeah, well, because that's what they did. They came out the same. And um, Now, granted, those ones are two different games. It's not like the exact same game with, like, you know... Slight changes. Yeah, like, it, it is. And then you got to kind of interconnect together and so on. But, um, but that's but the interconnectivity, like the idea of a companion game, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, it still definitely has that Pokemon-like style and what have you. So that's that's there, but um, yeah, it might be interesting to see where Nintendo kind of does because um, I mean they've done it before with a lot of times they're like sort of like I guess like their second party games or whatever you want to kind of call them like the stuff that's not Mario, Zelda, and so on, you know that have, yeah. other people have done things for. I mean even back in the olden days, I guess you got Donkey Kong Country. That that was like probably the first big time they're like shit. Let's uh, these British blokes yeah. want to like come in and. <laughs> 
<laughs> Make a donkey call. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not the first time that like a uh, third-party company ever made like a uh, big Nintendo game. Not at all. I'm just saying in the context of like. They seem to be more open to this stuff than what they used to be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's almost more like with, like, the biggest properties. The, the Zelda and the Marios. Mm -hmm. But, um... The other thing that's kind of funny is, like, I, I love how they, they literally have, like... They got the little guardian who's pretty much just, like, like hey, let's make, like, a BB-8 for, like, BB -8, yeah. Zelda to carry <laughs> around. And I remember there's, like, when you get farther in the game, like, there's the part where, like, once you kind of realize where that BB-8 came from or the guardian thing... Is that, like, Zelda, when she was, like, a child, she, like, put together this robot and whatnot. And then there's, like, a scene where it's, like, it was, like, so this was, like, her little buddy. And then, like, there's a part where, like, her dad comes in the room. He's, like, <laughs> I, no daughter of mine's gonna be a fucking nerd. Like, get this robot out of here. You're gonna train to be a warrior. <laughs> I, I mean, it, I, when you, when you, you watch the scene, it's very, it's much, it's actually very touching. Because he even, there's, there's just, like, that slight turn he does. Like, he really doesn't want to do this. He knows he's being a fucking dick. But since his daughter's literally gonna save the fucking universe, it's, uh, kind of important she stop playing with fucking robots. You, you know, you think of this day and age, you'd be like, yo, you, you, your kid's building a fucking robot in a fantasy world. Like, uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to imagine it just, he's like some blue-collar dad, you know, like, Zelda's at the kitchen table, the royal kitchen table, <laughs> building a robot. The fucking, like, queen is making dinner. And then, like, fuck, fucking the king walks in, like, all tired, like, hey, 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 uh, hey, honey, how was it today? Like, oh, just a busy day running a fucking country, you know, just puts the sword on the side, and, like, the umbrella holder takes off the crown, <laughs> like, fuck, just kicks off his shoes, goes over to his, like, PC boy, <laughs> the TV, just a giant Sheikah slate. <laughs> just grabs a beer out of the fridge. <laughs> He's like, like, just sets it on his gut, like... The fuck is that? Like I'm making a I'm making a robot friend, father. No fucking nerd. <laughs> Starts fucking slapping her. <laughs> Just like like the you know the queen runs in. King King, what are you doing? Like she's got to learn not to be a fuck. It's just for her own good. <laughs> He's got like a fucking white Throw beater on. <laughs> yeah, that's what's underneath that red robe. If he takes that robe off, it's just the wife beater. So it's all stained and nasty, like he's been wearing it for the last four days. <laughs> he's just like, all right, you want to be a woman? And he just puts a knife down in front of her. Kill me! Kill me! Come on, take a fucking stab! You want to do something? But father, take a stab! <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's one of those ones. And it's funny because, like, that robot thing, like, it even kind of goes kind of ballsy because, like, it sounds weird, but, like, Nintendo literally gave this, like, the old yeller kind of scene because there's a part where, like, you get close to, like, Ganon's lair and whatnot, and there's that fucking oh, yeah. douchebag Astar or whatever. It's like, oh, I'm going to bring back Ganon because uh, look at me. You know, like, my, my parents said that I couldn't go to My Chemical Romance, so this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> bring back Ganon. Oh, it's now. also, like, we, we, we were talking about this before, but it's, like, always, like, the groupie is just, like, if I bring the dark one back to life, maybe he'll like me and give me a job. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's literally like that Castlevania comic we were reading a while back, where it's just, like, that chick brings back Dracula, Dracula bangs her, and she's like, cool, so uh, I got a job, right? No. Nah. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 70s filmmaking. <laughs> Maybe if you get me some coke, we'll think about it. <laughs> in this case, in this case, virgin's blood. So. Yeah, but it's funny. It's like in this one though. It's like literally because once you get towards the end, it's like the little like BB-8 guardian thing. He he fucking goes gets rabid. That was all I thought. I was like, oh shit, it's old Yeller. Link's gotta put him down. You know, and Zelda's like fucking crying, but like she knows that like he's infected. There's only we, we gotta put him down. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> And then he, then at some, you have to defeat it. And then I know at some point you're able to. Um, James told me if you go and play a bunch of different missions, you assemble them and bring them back to life. Yeah, apparently once you beat the game, because he does the thing where he does his like the last body parts of him and whatnot. He like runs out and he like you know hits Ganon towards the very end in like one of the cutscenes and like saves Zelda and then Zelda's able to like send you know Ganon back to the next dimension or whatever. But, uh, like, once you sort of beat the main game, like, that's sort of like, the, like guess what? You thought there, were, there wasn't enough as is. Now you get to put them back together. And then you got to go and search for God knows how long and 
get all those extra parts you need to put them back together. Yeah, I, I was kind of expe- for a minute. I was like, oh my god, they had the balls to because you know I, I feel like a lot of times the cute cuddly sidekick character. I understand why they don't do it, but for a minute I was like, oh shit, they just have the balls to say, hey kids, one day your dog's gonna die. Do they have the balls just to say that? Like, uh, no, you revive them, so it's kind of irrelevant, you know? Yeah, well, because it's almost like that thing, like, I, I kind of liked how they had that, like, also, like, the fact that, like, the king's, like, almost doing that thing, being like, nope, like, we're, we're, we're tossing out your dog, like, one of those, like, dick moments and whatnot, like, take him to the pound, like, you fucking, the, the robot chewed up my slippers too many times. <laughs> like Kevin, like Kevin Bacon and my dog Skip. <laughs> you're too soft. This dog gets hit by a car. You're gonna be turned into a mopey little bitch. But Dad, shut up, Frankie Muniz. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's like one of those ones where it's like I, I like I like that sort of message he was going with in this game. I mean, granted, the, I mean he's a robot. I guess you can put him back together, but still, like I mean. For the most part, though, I like the sacrifice that there kind of was. I like the fact that you literally had to beat the fucking shit out of him at some point because he went rabid and just being like, nope, this is just sometimes how things go, kids. Like, he, he might be your best friend, but at some point he might turn on you. It's like, it's like keeping a bear one. as a pet, you know what I mean? You, it sounds like a good idea, but at some point when you, you forgot to feed him for the last two days, he's going to eat you. Or like a chimpanzee. It's all fun when he's a baby, but then once he realizes he could possibly run shit, well, look out. Yeah. <laughs> once he realizes it, he should be the one on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... So... <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah, there, there's that and so on. But I, I did just think that was kind of... <laughs> that was kind of neat. And at the same time, I mean, like, yeah, it is kind of a BB-8 sort of rip-off, which technically is a rip-off of R2-D2. You know, but, um... I felt like that character was kind of neat. I, I, I like that character. I mean, especially when it would sing like Zelda's lullaby when she was down. I was like, oh, that, that that gets you in the feels definitely if you're like an old school Zelda fan. They're trying to because the thing is, you think back on Breath of the Wild, it had Zelda music in it, but it didn't really have it like change the tempo. It would drop segments of it in weird areas you weren't totally expecting where you're just playing the game. It's quiet and like, wait. Wait, oh, that's Legend of Zelda theme right there. It just, it's, the tempo's different. It kind of changes at the last minute, you know? Mm -hmm. Where, so they're very sparing with the original music. Where in that one, like, this is the one original song people are going to know when they hear it, and we're not going to change anything about it. Yeah, well, because it's one of those ones, like, I was trying to think, like, Zelda's Lullaby, where else do you really hear that other than, um, I mean, maybe it's in some of the other ones, but as I say, just like Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask. I mean,. Said, maybe, maybe it's in, like, I got I, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe it's a family thing passed down. Yeah, I mean, well, granted, I mean, I'm guessing that's sort of what it is, but I'm just trying to think of game-wise. Does it even appear in some of those? Is it in, like, The Wind Waker? Does, does it have that exact same one when you're doing the wand I can, stuff? I can't, it's been too long, I can't remember. I don't know about playing it, but I could I could honestly see it being just used as, like, the reveal. Like, <gasps> it's Princess Zelda! No, no, no. No, no, no. I, I can see something that just like that weird. I just pictured like Zelda coming out like on a like a fucking wrestling match, like on a Triotron, like fucking big screen, and then that song playing me like, oh, well, shit. The, 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 the last, <laughs> it's fucking Zelda. The last guy had Motorhead playing. Oh, I was surprised. It, well, that was a big change in tunes. <laughs> I was just thinking like, like um, I was just thinking like. I, I would love for it to be some, like, you know, big UFC or some big boxer match. And, you know, the first guy comes out, like, it is Conor McGregor! And, you know, he's coming out. He has some, like, death metal or just some maybe, like, um some, like, angry gangster rap or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then someone else comes out and they're playing, this is a story of a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world. And just starts playing. Yeah, you're just like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> just like some random night, like one hit wonder song that was like on the radio in the nineties. Yeah, just a little umbop or something like that, just to come out. And go. <laughs> if, if 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 somebody's playing umbop, you can't lose to that guy. If he's playing nine days, you can't lose to him. Like I have to win now. Yeah, just be, even if it's written in the script, you can't fucking lose to that guy now. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna Montreal screw job this one. That's the only way you're gonna get out of it. <laughs> Well, or, or Zelda's all by even for that matter. Yeah, that'd be. That'd be I mean, if, as long as there's Zelda coming out, if there's anybody else coming out to that song, it'd be fucking weird. 
Floyd Mayweather! <laughs> do, 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 do. It's like, oh shit, he's going with like the fucking like N64 version of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's got a guy over there playing the the tune live on like an Oak Arena on the N sixty four. You know, here's here's the thing about that. Our generation would like like oh fuck yeah you know we don't give a shit he's that badass he's gonna play he's coming to the Zelda theme, but if we just go like fifteen years into the future or whatever and he's coming out oh he's doing the Fortnite theme like what the fuck <laughs> yeah exactly you'd be like that. You'd be like, well, I mean, come on, like, at least he could come out to, like, the Gears of War theme. I mean, it's made by the same dudes. Yeah. Come on, dude. Seriously. The Halo theme or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh. What's going on? Is well, I mean, Antichrist supposed to be born or something? What the fuck is that? <laughs> I mean, that's literally, well, that's the way I just picture, like, it's the same thing as, like, literally if you had the Halo theme playing, that'd be the, like, there'd be a certain generation just flip, and then, like, people that were, like, 20 years old would be like, the fuck is that? <laughs> They get a da na 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 get that part. Yeah. Oh yeah. Da 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 da. Boo. I know the Halo Two soundtrack too well from high school because everybody had the Halo Two soundtrack in high school. Well, yeah. Well, that song right there, like, that that is one of those ones. Like, shit. If Zelda's Lullaby gives you the feels, I kid you not, that Halo theme, or I guess not the theme, but like the the guitar theme one, where you just like you just know you're about ready to kick some ass and you're gonna. Drive that fucking warthog at the very end where some jack wagons put so much shit for you to run into on the way, and you're like, it's gonna blow! <laughs> Why is there all this stuff for me to run into? Oh, it's like it's like kind of like the 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 um, space equivalent of fruit stands, like a New York car chase. Yeah, it's like one of those ones. You're like, God damn it, ran into another thing there and whatnot. But um. So does a little by, yeah. That that did hit me in the feels. But yeah, it's just it's just little things like that and so on. Because you know the thing that's kind of different, I think, about this Hyrule Warriors: The Age of Calamity is this one's focused solely on one Zelda game. Where like the other Zelda one, as I said, it kind of like the first Hyrule Warriors was just it was the super greatest hit. So like you saw things, you're like, oh shit, it's Skyward Sword levels. Oh crap, it's Twilight Princess ones. And you're like, oh god, we're going to fucking Zelda 64. You know, and then you'd even get costumes and items and so on from the real old games. And then even the challenge map looked like the original Zelda and what have you. And it, you know, it gave you all sorts of. Because I mean, the one thing is that there was like twice as many characters I think in that last one. Not once again, not really the. That's kind of cool, I guess, when you're kind of playing with maybe a friend or something. You're kind of going back and forth trying out characters. But most of the time when you're playing single player, you're like, well, where, where's my four character roster? That's probably who I'll stick with. <laughs> yeah, well, I could I could even see DLC for this coming out. So you probably play as Astor. You'll probably play as Soga. You'll probably play as the uh, two uh, professors. You know? Yeah, well, because that was the one thing I was kind of thinking. I was, I was waiting for... Um what's that like kind of like the main chick professor they who, they're pretty much just like the way they design her is, or yeah poem or, Pura uh, or whatever yeah, yeah. i feel like the way that she's designed this sounds so weird it reminds me of like okay take a grandmother right take take like a lady in her 90s and make her as hot as fuck because <laughs> I, I don't know what it is that, that she, she she's dressed and the way she looks and everything about her she has that look like she's just like this 90 year old grandma that you would you know find everybody's 90 year old Japanese grandmother <laughs> you know <laughs> well that's what that's exactly what um what Impa is because if you jump into Breath of the Wild she's all like I'm old and decrepit but here's my granddaughter who looks he looks just like me how I did a hundred years ago and that's like the shy girl or whatever oh yeah that, that's I forgot about that too because most of the time Impa's always like because I was just thinking of being like a kid like when you first you know are playing a lot of the Zelda games with her there and Impa's always just like oh uh, hey, hey uh you don't mind me playing with a uh, is this your daughter oh no you just raise her well you don't mind me like hanging out with her right Cool, she cool. She looks like she just got done, like, doing a bench press of, like, a fucking VW bug. Yeah, exactly, because that's always how Impa was, like, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to be back here by 10 o'clock, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, unless the movie goes, no, you'll be back here by 10 o'clock. Don't you fucking be here at 10 o'clock. Oh, I'll, I'll fucking go. find you. I'll, I'll fucking find you. I'll use my ninja magic. Throws down a little, like, smoke bump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of those ones, you're like, oh, okay, uh. 
Oh. 10 o'clock it is. Ch- 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 I'll be there. Like, cause they always made Impa very threatening. So, I mean, like, so you sort of even see her, like, in Hyrule Warriors, and then she's kind of, like, almost like a kid, like, sort of tripping over her, like, own shoes and whatnot. And you're like, oh, oh that's, that, that's not the, that's not that threatening, like, like, Impa. Let's be honest. Impa has, like, that feeling of, like, you know, like, the threatening father that you see, like, in a movie, like, when, like, a guy comes to, like, date the daughter? You know, I think, like, like Bad Boys is 2. done on the first date, yeah. You know, like, Bad Boys 2, like, when they come on out, yeah. like... That's what Impa is, but just as, like, the female version. Impa's like an angry Martin Lawrence at the end of the day. (laughs) And you you get real scared, and you're like, oh, shit, maybe maybe I don't want to date this person. Well, Impa, in in all honesty, I want to say, maybe I'm wrong here, but I want to say Ocarina of Time is the first time they showed her as this big, badass, like, soldier. Mm -hmm. And I think she's maybe been that in other games, but then there's been games where she has just been the princess's, like her uh, assistant that's been at her side like i think in um in a link to the in a link between worlds she's just kind of like an elderly old lady but princess the prophecy you know that kind of thing yeah i mean, I, I, I just think most of the 3d games i think she is always like mm-hmm. big and threatening looking like i want to say that she's like that in twilight and she's god i don't even know she might not be in skyward because i almost want to say skyward i remember the one thing that was like it was like the old, like, because that's what I liked about Skyward Sword so much is that, like, the only thing that was really like Zelda was like Link and Zelda, and everything else in that game was like brand new. You know, it didn't kind mm-hmm. of feel like you're sort of playing the rehash. And not, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know what I mean? Like, Zelda 1, you know, Zelda 3, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, they're all kind of like the same game, just kind of with a different spin. You know, a little bit different stuff, but, like, I felt like Skyward Sword was the one where it was like, oh, shit. Like, this is, like, forget everything you know. That things are going to be fucking different. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I actually, I never finished Skyward Sword. I gotta come back to that one at some point, but, um... No, no, that's the sad thing, is that game was, like, one of those ones that everybody fucking jumped ship on that one. I mean, I'm not saying that you jumped ship because of this reason, but... Because Skyrim came out, and everybody's like, fuck Skyward Sword, there's Skyrim instead! And I think that's what kept me from playing <laughs> that game. Like, I still have that thing where it's like, no, nah, I'm not going to play Skyrim still. Nope, nope. I, I know it's been long <laughs> enough that it's not that big of a deal, but, like, I, I, I just remember everybody fucking just kicking, like, drop-kicking fucking Skyward Sword out their window for Skyrim, so... It still, still, still kind of hurts me a little bit inside. That, that's a more recent. That's a more recent grudge. I still have a Crash Bandicoot grudge. I know you do. I remember like, oh, like the other day that you, you came over and I was like, "Do you play some Crash Team Racing?" You're like, "Get the fuck out! You ain't fucking playing that. Fuck you, Crash. <laughs> no Crash is gonna be in my house." Oh, but, but the new Crash Bandicoot Four. Oh, I want to hear about you, Crash Bandicoot Four. Why don't you and Crash go have a gay orgy together? Oh. Well, it was one of the levels in the game, but no. <laughs> it was a bonus stage. It was between you and that little floating, like, <laughs> Crash, no, no! It'd just be like, Crash has urges. Well, because that's the thing about Crash. He's really, he's, he's like a, he's like that 15-year-old kid who's not really too bright, you know what I mean? Doesn't fucking wear a shirt, probably doesn't wear underwear. You know what? Chances are, I'll be honest, the new Crash Bandicoot game, it's probably good. Dude, it it's probably fun. is. It's fun as But fun. I'm never going to know. <laughs> I, I love the hell out of that game. Like, I, I thought it was so badass. And you could play as fucking um, Coco. So that was what I did the whole time. I was just kind of like, at the time, I was really sore about it. Because I, I already, you know, I already felt like I was splitting lines between like people were like, Nintendo or Sega. Even though I was more Nintendo, Sonic was still one of my favorite characters. So I'm like, well, Sega's still really cool. But, you know, I, st- I, I, I can live with them both. But then, like... Crash Bandicoot just pops in out of nowhere, like, hey guys, here's the real one. I'm gonna be talking shit outside Nintendo's office. Like, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. You're you're a poor man, you're like a ripoff of Sonic, and you're not even fast. Get the fuck out of my face. And you know what it's really a ripoff of like I always think about it? Is when you play the first Crash Bandicoot, it it reminds me a lot of actually Donkey Kong Country, is what it's almost like aping as well, too. Literally aping. Kind of bug. Bug, which is oh. a Sega game too. Yeah, there is kind I of forgot about that shit. Yeah, exactly. But it's funny, like, you, people don't think about that, but, like, that little bit of, like, that advertising when you talk shit about the other one, l- that sometimes can affect your game for the rest of your life to certain people. <laughs> like, like when you when you tell somebody that, like, what they like is fucking stupid and they should come over to your house instead, that, that really can also be like, fuck you, I ain't fucking checking your thing out ever. 
I mean, to be fair, I eventually did get a PlayStation. I eventually did play Naughty Dog games, but it wasn't Crash. You know? <laughs> as if like he had a fucking hand in it. As if he's a he's a sentient character. I'm like, no, fuck that character. Too many too many memories. <laughs> well, realistically, every Naughty Dog game plays like Crash Bandicoot. So it's not really. A, it sounds so weird, but I remember just when the like the first time I played Uncharted. I'm like, shit, it feels like Crash Bandicoot with a fucking gun in my hand. <laughs> this is like the Shadow of the Hedgehog of Crash. <laughs> Nathan Drake just, he does like a, a forward front flip on like a box. Yeah, exactly. That's the open shit. Well, it, it just sounds so weird, but like all those Naughty Dog games, even fucking um, The Last of Us. It's riding a... F- <laughs> they, 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 have, they have that same, like there's like that camera movement that they kind of use that feels just like the Naughty Dog one. Like where like you'll be running away from something like towards yourself, towards the TV and whatnot. There'll always be some kind of scenes like that. It's just like, oh shit, Crash Bandicoot, here we go. <laughs> fucking Nathan Drake has to hop on the back of a baby polar bear and ride this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just, that's, how he, that's how he escapes like the that'd be the things like okay because you know the, like those uncharted games always they, they do the indiana jones thing where it's like very realistic very realistic very realistic and then all of a sudden you're like oh shit there's something mystical here at the very end they should let you beat the game and then you're like oh you know the whole, everything's collapsing you know whatever nathan you know like drake's fortune's like you know melting up and so on jump on that polar bear and escape <laughs> Because <laughs> here's the thing, you you already beat the entire. The, they made it the whole way through. You could pull this off right now, or something <laughs> happens like he's got he's got like some kind of sickness, and it's just like just drink this, drink this, it'll heal you. Like he drinks it, and all of a sudden, like he's like <sighs> he starts like breathing heavy. All of a sudden, his hands get bigger. Like no, no, his ears get bigger, and next thing you know, he turns into fucking like body horror Crash Bandicoot. Like oh shit, it's been a fucking prequel. <laughs> Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> That's make- how they have the connection there, because like they made they, there's like all these apparently theories that like um, there's apparently theories Crash Bandicoot to Jax. I don't know the details. I heard I overheard it. Could be total bullshit. I know there's theories between Last of Us and Uncharted. <laughs> like and now, they're, they're, like, now, now there's the theories between Last of Us, <laughs> Uncharted, Crash, and <laughs> Jack and Daxter. <laughs> They just why not just go all, all in they just all come together like, you know what i mean like one of those ones like well you know one time nathan drake just hit his head real hard he's been in like the loony bin ever since then but uh he believes that he's this bandicoot with a sister running around like in australia <laughs> or you even, or even go even further like fucking like last of us like ellie's like i gotta kill the bandicoot that killed joel <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. Is like she always gets she goes so far into it that she starts to be like, all I know is killing and death, and I can't raise a family. I'm a 17 year old girl. I've seen too much. <laughs> and then she just starts like, because I, I, I kid you not, I really want them to make a third game where she's like 38 years old. She's just like hard drinking, brutally murdering people, and so on. Just like wanders the land, but maybe she starts to. She starts to get really out of it, and she just kind of, like, hallucinates and believes that there's this fucking bandicoot out there that's responsible for all this. <laughs> she she accepts the other lady that, you know what, I understand the other lady because, you know what, it was the bandicoot that did it. The bandicoot's the one that we gotta get. The <laughs> bandicoot spread the virus. <laughs> was it me? And only I can, I'm immune to it, so I can fuck the bandicoot, and that would take away its power. Wow, Naughty Dog is really riding hard. I, I was no one was expecting this. People weren't expecting the direction they went in in Last of Us Part Two, Part Three. They definitely didn't see coming. <laughs> Where's that bandicoot at? Oh, uh, hi, Ellie. How you doing? Don't you fucking hide me. You don't know what I've seen. I've killed more people than you've ever seen in your entire life. Just slams them over the hood of a car that's there for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Inside a building. Yeah. Where'd that fucking car come from? Shit, we're, we're, we're on the 60th floor here. <laughs> I don't even learn why my car's there because I, br- I carried the car here on my back. <laughs> well, this only gets darker. <laughs> Any closing thoughts on, on Age of Calamity? I'll, uh,. This this one's totally awesome. I mean, at some point, this is kind of how I feel like you finish up those, like, once you kind of finish the story and you got those extra challenges, 
is granted maybe one day in a magical future or something like that you'll actually have somebody come on over and play split screen with you because it's like that's where i feel like if you had a buddy to sort of sit down and play split screen with you could like knock out like all those challenges would probably be that much more fun well hopefully you can play the challenges split screen my luck is you'd go into two player mode and be like oh you, you can't play those challenges I, I know you need to get them done but uh no 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 you, you can't but hopefully you could play it all in split screen and that would be kind of a fun way to go about it yeah i like to play this game uh, multiplayer at some point that'd be pretty awesome and um yeah i'm not uh, i'm not not that i ever disliked the warriors games I was never huge on them, but uh, this one is definitely, as long as you like Zelda, it's definitely worth picking up. Yeah, between this one and the first Hyrule Warriors and so on, like, I, I had a hell of a time with them. And I think it, it's kind of nice when they make these kind of games where it's like, here's Zelda, and it gives you kind of like the same sort of feel, but like you're kind of playing it like in a quicker action-paced mode. Like, it reminds me of like, they made these uh, Resident Evil kind of like, shooter games on like the wii and so on i think they came out on ps3 and so on as well too but like the dark side chronicles and like the umbrella chronicles and i always felt like the coolest thing about that is like you literally it's like it's almost like if you want to just sort of kick back and shoot some zombies and go through the resident evil story but don't have to like you know sit there and actually play through it and solve puzzles and you know have the threat of death around the corner oh, i mean there's, there's death in that one but it's not like not like you have to end your game you just restart your uh what level you're on like that's sort of how that like hyrule warriors kind of feels it's like Oh, it's like playing a Zelda game, but you, you, there's not as much investment. Though I guess with all those challenges, maybe there is that much investment. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, fun stuff. Cool things in the Hyrule Warriors and Zelda. Uh, I guess this is our Zelda game for the year, so we'll see what comes out next year when uh, they drop whatever they're going to do with Breath of the Wild. Yeah, probably Breath of the Wild 2 will come out, but then again, maybe it's... I notice a lot of times major games like that get pushed back a year or two, but... I think Breath of the Wild came out on time. I think it did. So, who knows? Maybe this one will, too. Yeah, like, well, that's the thing. is like, cause, you know, it's been a couple of years. Maybe they'll kind of work on it. The only other one is there's only one other Zelda game out of the 3D ones that they have not made a remaster of yet, and that's Skyward Sword. So, I kind of feel that you one... You could do that with uh, Switch, definitely. Yeah, because hopefully that one would work fine with the Switch. Because the only downfall of the Switch is I know, like that motion control isn't nearly as good as the Wii. That sounds kind of weird, but, like, every game mm -hmm. that, like, has motion control, it's, like, there's cool stuff with it, but I notice it's not nearly as dialed in, and I think it's because it's missing the the sensor bar that you don't think much of, but you're like, oh, I think that made a big difference. But for the most part, I feel like you could still get away with that and be able to use it and maybe have uh, two types of modes, because, you know, I guess they would have to still make it, like, where um, you could play it without it, because... If someone was playing it, like, on the Switch Lite. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, realistically, I think you could kind of dial it in. I mean, have the motion controls if you totally want it. Because there is a lot of stuff there, like aiming and, you know, putting the sword up in the air and looking like a fucking maniac in your own house. Be like, come <laughs> on! Just, I remember just throwing my arm up, like, fucking charge up, you piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like you're battling a boss, so it's intense, and that's making it even more intense and whatnot. But, um... I, I, I feel like you look Skywalker on the original like 1977 poster for Star Wars. He's holding it over his head, basically. Practically, I bet you that's even where they thought they're like, you know what? Let, let's be like that poster. But um, that's the one that I feel like because you know <clears throat> they've done all the other Zelda games. That's the only one that kind of needs it. So I have a feeling that that's going to definitely be the unless for some reason they decide like Zelda Two remake. <laughs> that would you never be no maybe th that would be the only other one that would be like oh shit uh, like they they could do that but um phantom hourglass <laughs> yeah exactly you didn't expect this one coming back but it is <laughs> and yeah you got to get your stylus back on control link what do you think we're gonna let you use a controller this time <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so hopefully there'll be more of that good stuff but yeah tons of good fun zelda stuff to be had and what have you so beyond that go check it out dot com from a podcast comic books like pizza boys old animations and all that fun stuff i'm spencer scott holmes and i'm ryan dunnigan and we'll see you some other time later folks thanks again for listening to the old man orange podcast sure check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts cartoons music animation and a whole lot more we also have the old man orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff 
If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again. We're out of here.